stop your mercy follows me your kindness feels my life your love amazes me and i'll sing because you are good and i'll dance because you are good and i'll shout because you are good you are good you're good to me you're good to me if nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you the earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth and in my darkest night you shine as bright as day your love amazes me and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good, and you are good to me, to me, and I'll sing because you are good, and I'll dance because you are good, and I'll shout because you are good, you are good with a cry, and with a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim that you are good. That you are good And in the sun or rain Now my life celebrates That you are good That you are good With a cry And with a cry of praise My heart will proclaim That you are good you are good and in the sun or rain of my life celebrates that you are good that you are good and I'll sing because you are good and I'll dance because you are good and I'll shout because you are good you are good to me, to me, and I'll sing because you are good, and I'll dance because you are good, and I'll shout because you are good, you are good, and you're good to me. You're good to me. says in the sun or the rain my life celebrates that you are good that means whatever's going on in your life right now whatever you're worried about whatever you're concerned about whatever burden you're carrying God is still good 
And I wonder right now if you, if everybody would just bow your heads and close your eyes as we go to prayer, would you just take a second and just pray to God in your own mind, in your own heart, and just say, God, I choose right now to give you the praise you deserve. Whatever's going on in your life, I choose right now to give you the praise that you deserve. Father, we bow our hearts before you right now and we acknowledge that you are good. We proclaim your goodness and your greatness today. Father, we know that doesn't change. You are an unchanging God. Our circumstances don't change your greatness and your goodness. And they certainly don't change your love for us. So today we choose to praise you top of the mountain, from the the bottom of the valley, anywhere in between, Father, we choose to praise you because you deserve it. So right now, God, we give you our focus and our attention. I pray that you would fill Kyle with your spirit. May we have hearts right now in this moment that are ready to receive your word and your truth. And I pray that we'd be changed because of it. We love you and we trust you and we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome home. Good morning. Glad you're here today. Welcome home to those that um, are watching online. We're glad that you're here this morning. Man, God is good. Amen. Amen. He is so good, and He has something for us today. We're in a series. We actually started a new series this last week called The Four Soils. And what we're going to learn is it's all about the dirt. Can we say that together? It's all about the dirt. Essentially, it's all about the soil of our heart. Jesus would talk about different things and try to give divine truths through a fictional story called a parable. And this series is focused on one specific parable called the parable of the soil. And essentially, the, really the question of this series is, what type of soil is your heart when it comes to God's Word? What type of soil is your heart when it comes to God's Word? Jesus explains that there's different types of soil when it comes to to our hearts, specifically as it relates to God's word. So here's what Jesus says in the parable of the sower. He says, a farmer went out to sow some seed. And as he was scattering the seed, it landed in a few different places. Some fell along the path and it was trampled on and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock and when it came up, the plants withered because they didn't have any moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and it yielded a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. Okay, so Jesus is telling this story to the disciples and anybody else that was listening and explaining this to them. And okay, they're thinking, all right, great. You're telling us about farming. We kind of know about farming. We understand there's different kinds of things. So what's your point of the story? And so later Jesus says, here's the parable. Here's the meaning of what I just said. The seed in the story is the word of God. Okay, those along the path are the ones who hear, and we talked about this last week in week one, the ones along the path. Those are the ones who are come along the path, and the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. We, just a really quick recap. We said last week that when we have a hard heart, we hear God's word, but it doesn't penetrate us. You know, we all have kids and grandkids. Sometimes we have selective hearing, Right? Clean your room, do your homework, don't forget to do your choice, your choice, your chores. And they're hearing you, but because they don't want to listen and they're not interested in what you have to say, their heart is hard to the message, so no action is taken. And that same example is what Jesus is explaining here and what we talked about last week. There is a group of people out there that, that when they hear God's word, Jesus says, they hear it. But the birds come and pluck the the seed away because their hearts are hard. 
Okay? Those on the rock are the ones who receive, well, that's what we're talking about today. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with what church? With joy. They receive it with joy when they hear it, but they have no, they have no root. Those at home, they have no root. They believe for how long? A while, okay? They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, and by the way, um, sometimes we think when we're a believer, especially I've talked to teenagers before, well, I gave my heart to Jesus, and then all this bad stuff is happening to me. If Jesus really is who he says he is, then why is all this bad stuff happening to me? And that's a fair question to ask, but the truth is the Bible is filled with people who went through hard stuff. In fact, Scripture says, not if, but when trials come. So Jesus is basically saying that when trials take place, the people who are um, the rocky soil, which is what we're talking about today, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil, it stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain the word, okay, let's finish it together, and by persevering, produce a crop, okay? So Jesus is describing four different types of hearers to the word of God, and each week of this series, we're looking at a specific type of hearer. And today, we're talking about the rocky or stony soil hearer. So again, just to quickly recap, this is the person who receives the word of joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but when the sun comes out, all right, when the sun, one of the gospels says, when the sun comes out, and the sun represents worries in our life, stresses in our life, okay? Let's be honest in here, okay? Just vulnerability, those at home. Raise your hand if you've had a little bit of stress this week, okay? Be honest, all right? Some of you have, all right? When the sun comes out, when the stress takes place, when the worries ha- you know, are, are filling our minds, when the COVID is up, you know, when there's things going on in our life that are not easy to handle, if we don't have a root system, we become like the rocky soil where the soil is shallow and the seed dies and doesn't bear fruit, okay? It's like casting seed on a stony soil. When it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture, and in turn, the sun scorched the plant, okay? So what, what our goal of this series, and really the rest of our life, what our goal should be, is for us to have strong, deep roots, uh, spiritually speaking. And the way that we, a part of the ways, one of the ways that we get those roots is through reading his word. In fact, just to re- recap from last week, for those who are listening at home, maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you're just figuring this out. Maybe this is your first time to, to, to hear this today. Um, the Bible is our moral compass for how we make the decisions we make. The type of words that we use, um, how we view marriage, how we view divorce, how we view finances, how we view sexuality, how we view any topic that you could possibly think of. It comes from God's word. And the Holy Spirit, which when we invite Jesus into our heart, when we invite Jesus into our heart, his spirit begins to guide us. And the Holy Spirit will never ask us to do something that contradicts our moral compass, which we find in God's word, okay? So the question I have for all of us today, including myself, is how deep are your roots? So here's our principle. Be intentional about growing and strengthening your walk with Jesus. Let's read that together. Be intentional about growing and strengthening your walk with Jesus. Now, I would say this with my kids here because they've heard me basically say this before. You know, when you're a parent or you're a grandparent or you're a friend or whatever, you naturally have 
connection with certain people maybe more than you do others, okay? And it's the same as a parent. You love them all the same, but maybe you have a little bit more in common with one kid than you do another. And so it's easy sometimes with one kid to just naturally spend time with them because maybe, you know, you're the mom and they're the daughter or you're the dad and they're the son or you have the similar personality. It's just easy to spend time with them. But then maybe you have a child or a grandchild or somebody in your life who you love and and they love you, but maybe you don't exactly have that same commonality and you have to intentionally connect with them. Some of you are, you know what I'm talking about here. It's on purpose. Or maybe you're at church and you see someone who's never been here before and they're clear across the hall from you or you recognize them or maybe you don't recognize them, but you know they're new. And so rather than just seeing if it works out to where you end up bumping into them, you intentionally go out of your way to go over and greet them and ask them how they're doing. And our walk with God, making sure that we have deep roots, that, that, that our roots are um, together in such a way that when hard times come, we're able to withstand those. We have to be intentional about that. One of the ways we're intentional is gathering together. Another way that is intentional is talking with God. And one of the most important ways is reading his word. And I'm just going to say it, okay? But sometimes reading God's word is like coffee, okay? I wasn't naturally a coffee drinker, it's the way some of us are. And I started driving a school bus in the morning, and I had to be awake and be alert, and I didn't have time to put cream and put sugar and all that stuff that goes into coffee. I just had time to drink it black, and so I started learning to drink coffee black, and now I like coffee black. I had to acquire a taste for it, okay? Sometimes we'll be reading passages of Scripture that we don't need to acquire a taste for. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That makes me all up in my feels. I don't need to acquire a taste for that. Oh, man. But then there's other scriptures. Forgive those who are mean to you. Okay, I've got to acquire a taste for that. I have to. Submit to that. Does that make sense? Maybe that's a weird way of explaining it. But all of God's word, word, as we talked about last week, is useful for teaching and correcting and equipping and challenging us. So I want to talk to you today in light of the fact that we're called to be intentional about growing and strengthening our walk with God. That's why small groups are so important. That's why prayer is so important. That's why God's word is so important. Those are some of the ways that God grows our faith. So I'm going to talk to you about three practical action steps that are fundamental to our faith, but are things that we have to do in order to grow our relationship with Christ. Because the truth is this morning, and I know I'm tarrying on this just a little bit, storms are going to come. The Bible talks about it. The doctor's not always going to give us great news. Our finances aren't always going to be the best they've ever been. We're not always going to have the best mindset that we've ever had. In fact, right now, I was talking to somebody, and there's some articles out about it. There's more people struggling with anxiety and mental health than ever before because of all the different things that are going on in our world right now. And so these things that we're getting ready to talk about, while they're fundamental, are even more important than they've ever been. Here's the first one. We have to decide that time with Jesus each day is non-negotiable. Let's read that together. Decide that time with Jesus each day is non-negotiable. Now, we all have non-negotiables in our life whether we think about it or not. Now, just being honest with you, I would hope that all of us have this non-negotiable. Maybe not. But if you don't have this non-negotiable, you might want to think about adding in it. It's called brushing your teeth, right? You tell your kids, brush your teeth. At camp, sometimes I'll have to remind students, take a shower, brush your teeth, 
you know, you need some DO for your BO, okay, all right? I'm inviting you into our boys' middle school cabin right now, okay? There are certain non-negotiables that we have. Some of you, you have a Pepsi every single day. It's a non-negotiable, okay? Some of you have coffee every single day. It's a non-negotiable. And did you know there should be spiritual non-negotiables in our life? Because it's those spiritual non-negotiables, and we're going to talk about what those are in just a minute, that make all the difference in our life. We used to have, it took us a couple years to remember, because Whitney would, Whitney's into decorating. My wife, she's into decorating. And Christmas time, man, there's hardly a square inch in our house that doesn't have something lighting or, you know, if you have epilepsy, you don't want to come to my house because everything's just going, you know. And she overloaded a circuit, we, and maybe both of us did, I don't remember, but we kept forgetting two or three years in a row why the same problem. But anyway, what was taking place was is that she was putting too many things on an outlet, and as a result of it, the power wasn't working. Now, you've got to understand, when the lights were plugged in, it was beautiful. It looked nice, loved to sit in there with the lights off, and look at the tree and drink hot cocoa. Okay, not really, but I was trying to give you a Lifetime movie quote there. I don't watch Lifetime. She does. Okay. You guys are serious today, all right? (laughs) But no matter how pretty it is, it doesn't do any good if the lights won't work. And no matter how beautiful God's spirit is and the fruits that he has to offer... It doesn't do any good if they're not manifested in the life of a believer. Jesus is our Savior, but if we don't reflect who He is, there's no, there's no action being taken in our world to see people come to know Christ. And it starts with a decision. Very few things in life... We should follow just by our feelings. Most of life is about decisions. And I just want to say real quick before we move on this morning, maybe there's somebody online today or here that you have not really not decided to make time with Jesus a non-negotiable, but you haven't decided either. You just really maybe haven't thought about it. Can I just encourage, if, if one person came out of here today and applied this one right here, it'd be worth having church. So before I move on today, I want to encourage you, if you have not decided that time with God, which means talking with Him, reading His Word in some manner, shape, or form, if you have, dis- have not decided that in a, that's a non-negotiable in your life, I really urge you to do that. Okay, listen to what, there's a missionary named J. Oswald Sanders. Here's what he said. It is impossible for a believer, no matter what his experience to keep right with God if he will not take the trouble to spend time with God. Can you imagine, you know, I was married in December of 99. Can you imagine if the last time I talked to my wife was on our wedding day or I checked in with her every six weeks? That's going to impact our relationship. To keep our marriage right, we have to talk. And to keep our relationship with God growing and moving forward, we have to spend time with Him. Spend plenty of time with Him. Let other things go. Let's read it together. But don't neglect Him. Make it non-negotiable that you're going to spend time with God. And here's one of the ways you can do that. Strive to talk with God more than you do anyone else each day. These are more action steps this morning than just things we need to know, okay? Strive to talk with God more than you do anyone else each day. Now, for some of us, we might think, well, how is that possible? You don't know. I work 12-hour days. I work construction. I'm constantly with people. I don't have time to stop and and get down on my knees and put my hand, you know, my finger cross my fingers and, and pray. I mean, I'm constantly having to go. You don't understand. I'm a teacher. I've got kids. I'm a coach. I'm a student. I've got all these things going on in my life. Listen, prayer doesn't have to be formal. 
Talking with God is something we can do all day long. It should, some of us don't multitask well, and I'll just put myself in that category. I have a hard time multitasking. But even if we don't multitask very well, we can talk with God and go about our day no matter what it is we've got to do. There's been times where someone, I'll be counseling someone, and they're talking to me, and what they're dealing with is heavy, and I don't have the answer. Like, I don't know. And I'll just talk with God and say, God, would you help me here? Give me the words to say. Like, I don't know. And then maybe you're in the shower. Maybe you're in the swimming pool. Maybe you're doing laundry. Maybe you're building a barn. Maybe you're doing whatever. What would happen in your life if the number one person in your life, my, you know, my kids are into Snapchat, right? You're snapping people and you got these snap statistics. What if we snap Jesus more than anyone else? What if we talked with him more than anyone else? What if we texted him more than anyone else? What if the number one app that we used on our phone when we go through and it tells you what apps you've been on was the Bible? Jesus said, you know, talking about talking with God more than anyone else. Paul says, pray continually. I forgot to delete Jesus said. Actually, Paul said, pray continually. Be joyful always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Listen to what Martin Luther said. I have so many things to to do today. Let's read it. I dare not ignore my time with God. Because I got to tell you something that we already know. Storms are coming. Trials are coming whether we are grounded in his word or not. When it comes to ranking authorities in your life, rank God's word, where church? At the top. Well, you know, I rank Fox News at the top, or I rank CNN at the top, or I rank some other news station at the top, or I rank what my wife says at the top, or I rank what my husband says at the top, or I rank what I think at the top. But if we truly understood that God's word is filled with grace and truth and wisdom and guidance for conflict, for relationships, for finances, dare I say politics, for any topic that you can think of, What would happen if it was ranked at the top of your list and my list? Here's what Jesus said. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. Okay? He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When a flood came, troubles came, trials came, the doctor didn't give you the... the, news you wanted, there's a tragedy of some kind in your life, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it what, church? I don't know why this is happening to me. Any of you heard that before? I just can't believe. And there's, and there's times to ask those questions. I get it. But some of us, we have these patterns of constantly, every time these tragedies or these things take place, we just begin to just freak out and be filled with anxiety. And I wonder sometimes, I don't know, but I wonder sometimes, 
Are we hiding God's word in our heart? Because if we're hiding God's word in our heart, we're going to know like stuff happens. Trials take place. Listen to this quote by Charles Spurgeon. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. That's powerful. A Bible that's falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. So I've mentioned before, I drive a school bus in the mornings before school starts for USD 250, and um, there was a bus driver there. His name was Bob Cruz, and he was in his, I think he's in his 80s, and he passed away this week. And Bob was the kindest guy you could ever meet. And a lot of times after my route on the way back to my vehicle, he'd be in his bus reading his Bible, and I'd stop in and say, hey man, how's it going? And we'd talk a little bit. And one day, I wasn't really paying attention. I never really paid attention to his Bible before. I just, this is Bob. Um, I didn't really pay attention to it. I just saw it was in his hand, and I knew that, you know, um, he was reading it, but I didn't really look at it. And one day, for some reason, it got my attention. It got me kind of emotional. It's hard for you to really tell how weathered it is in that photo. Um, I actually took a picture of it when he, when he had it opened, and it's just like falling apart. But Bob was in the Word like no one you could you would ever believe. I mean, no one you ever seen before. And his Bible was just tattered and torn, and he had things marked and underlined. Did you know that having the cleanest Bible is not the goal? And I want to tell you, not only did he hear the word, you know, we talked about the different kinds of people who hear the word. Not only did he hear the word, but man, he oozed God's word. How's it going, Kyle? How you doing, man? I pray for you. You doing okay? Bob had all kinds of trials going on at home with his wife physically and different things going on. And he just always had this smile on his face. And I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes, you know, places of employment aren't always the most positive place in the world. And sometimes you can get negative. And man, when people would get negative and down and frustrated, and Bob walked by, hey, it's okay. You know, don't stress about that. You know, he's talking that Bob Ross voice. You know the painter Bob Ross? <laughs> You half wanted to go to sleep and half made you feel better. <laughs> I think I got emotional when I saw his Bible for two reasons. One, here's a man who's read God's word and just demonstrates it. And it was just, it was a beautiful, you know, image in my head and picture in front of me. But also, like, I want my Bible to look like his. I want to know God's word. He would say things like, man, God is teaching me this again. And you could tell like he's read it like 50 times. We hide God's word in our heart. It helps us not to sin against him. It helps us demonstrate the character and the nature of Jesus to other people. I shared last week, and I'm only sharing this again because not everybody was here last week. And not everybody was watching online. I don't know. I may share it every week of this series. But I was talking to someone. They were going through a bunch of heavy stuff, as all of us have been through before. And I asked the question I ask a lot of people. Hey, how much time have you spent in God's Word lately? My life stinks, and there's all this going on. I haven't spent any time in God's Word. Anyway, I was trying to, you know, and I'm, and I'm thinking like, you need to go to the gas station, man, and get filled up. So I would love to see out of this series more than, than the messages and the hearing of what's being said that the fruit of this series would be that we would develop the spiritual discipline or continue the spiritual discipline for those who are already doing this of reading His Word
Let's read this. Be intentional about growing and strengthening your walk with Jesus. It develops your root system. And it helps you become more and more weather resistant to the things going on in our life. Listen to Paul's prayer here. Talking about this root system. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through what, church? Through his spirit. In your inner being. So that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with the church to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And Bob was filled up, so much so that he was running over because of the, him hiding God's word in his heart. Are we focused on the trials or the sun coming out, you know, and that's scorching the plant. Or we focused on how big God is. Sometimes the Bible helps us recalibrate just how big and wide and awesome God is. So my question this morning as the band comes is, how's your soil? Is it pliable? Let's stand together this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you care about us, that you love us. And Father, today I pray that if there's someone in here who doesn't have a relationship with you, Father, would you remind us of your word that says if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, if there's some of us who've maybe been around the church a while and we've, we feel like we have a good idea of what God's Word's talking about, may we not be satisfied with that. May we hunger and crave to learn more of your truth. Lord, I pray as a church, Father, our roots would just continue to grow deeper and deeper. You would help us to reflect who you are. Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen.
my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. And heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. And hold 
God good. He's so good. Hey, I've asked Adam to come and represent Glenn White and Melody Brennan. Most of you may know, but if you don't know, uh, they're struggling with COVID. Glenn is in, at KU Med in the ICU. And the last report I got this last week or yesterday, actually today, this morning, was that this has been a good week. There's not been any positive change, but there's also not been any negative change. And Michelle's big thing of just talking with her is we just need his lungs to heal. We just need his lungs to start working it the way that they're supposed to. And then Melody Brennan has also been in ICU and she was transported to Joplin. And we've got some really good reports on her the last couple of days. So we know that God hears our prayers. In James chapter 5, it talks about when someone's sick, that we're to gather together and to pray um, for those that are sick. And the scripture says that It's powerful and effective. So if you're new this morning and you don't know this, but we believe in healing, and I don't have time this morning to tell you, but there's been different times just in the life of our church where God has completely healed people. And so today, um, the Bible, as I said, talks about anointing. So I'm just going to make the sign of the cross on Adam's forehead. We believe in something called intercessory prayer, which means... In fact, I'm here today because I had people praying for me, my salvation when I was growing up. They were interceding for me on my behalf. And so we're going to intercede today, those online, those of us here. Um, we're going to just pray today, okay? So pray with us. Pray, pray specifically, okay, this morning. Lord Jesus, we anoint Adam in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on behalf of Glenn White today. And Father, um, we thank you that he's not gotten worse. But Father, we just pray alongside Michelle and so many people today, Father, that you would bring healing to his lungs in Jesus' name. God, today we ask, Lord, that, um, you know, with, with his lungs being filled with all these different things and just struggling for breath, God, today, would you touch him, Lord, from the top of his head to the tips of his feet? Would you restore his lungs Father, and bring healing. And Lord, Jonah gave you praise while he was in the belly of the well. He praised you that you were going to bring deliverance before it happened. And so, Father, today we praise you, Lord, for how you're going to bring healing to Glenn's lungs. Lord, we also anoint Adam in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit on behalf of Mel today. And Father, we are thankful for the last couple of reports that we've gotten that are good. But Father, we pray for total healing of her as well. Pray that you would touch her from the top of her head to the tips of her feet. Lord, we pray that you would just, Father, fill her with health today. Father, clear up her lungs. May she feel your presence today. Lord, we lift up Glenn's wife, Michelle, and Melody's husband, Dan, and their families, Lord. Father, we're believing for miracles there. And Lord, we anoint Adam in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on behalf of so many other that are dealing with sickness right now, with COVID and other illnesses. Lord, we just pray that you would touch them, that you would strengthen them, that you'd bring healing to their body. Father, we give you praise and glory for who you are. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Amen means let it be so. And so today, may it be so. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Father, we pray that you just bless the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated, and we have just a few reminders for you this morning. Hey, Pit Nice family, we are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Before we get into our announcements, though, we just want to take a moment to welcome any of you who might be new or visiting with us this morning. If that's you, we just want to extend a special welcome to you and to let you know how glad we are that you are here with us this morning. We also want to ask you to just take a moment to fill out a Connect card. It just lets us know that you are here with us this morning. And if you'll just take a moment to fill that out, you can drop it in one of the offering boxes located on either side of the worship center. 
Also, for any of you who might be visiting with us online, we would encourage you to head out to our website. We have a connect card out there as well. And so we would just ask that you fill that out and let us know that you have joined us this morning. Also, for any of you who might have brought an offering with you this morning, we would encourage you to just drop that in one of the offering boxes located on either side of the worship center as you leave. And for those of you who have joined us online, we would encourage you to make a donation through our secure online giving portal out on our website or through the Church Center app. And as always, we just wanna thank you in advance for your generosity. Now, here are the rest of the announcements for this morning. Hey, don't forget our Worship at the Park event is coming up next Sunday. It's gonna be on Sunday evening at 7 p.m. at the Lincoln Park Band Dome. It's just gonna be a night of worship and fellowship, so we encourage you to come out and be a part of it. We are gonna be one church family in one location, which means our Connecting Point Church family from Columbus is gonna join us, our Hispanic ministry is gonna be there, and then our Pitt Naz Church family will be there as well. And so we hope that you plan on being there Get it on your calendar. We'll see you then. Also, for all of you parents with kids in our Connect Kids ministry, wanted to let you know that we have a couple of fun events coming up for your kids at the end of July. One is called Build It and the other is a preschool play day. So make sure to check out those events. You can find them out on our website, on Facebook, and also out in the Church Center calendar. So make sure to check those out. Get them on your calendar. Also, if you are not a part of our Parents of Pitt Naz Facebook group, we would encourage you to do that. That is just a great way for us to communicate with you all of the different things that are going on and the things that we are engaging your kids with. So make sure to go out and join that group as well. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. Well, that wraps it up for announcements today. We hope that you have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Stand with us right quick before we go. Kyle talked about spending time with God. Um, we've got a couple of resources on our connect wall out in the lobby. One is a prayer resource. One is a Bible resource. We created those uh, to help you develop your time with God in prayer and in the word or deepen and strengthen your time with him. And so if you're interested, check those out. They're on the connect wall right next to the kitchen window in the lobby. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed, wonderful day.